This is Door Beach. To most Israelis, it's a place to spend the weekend. To Palestinians, it's home to a mass grave. This beach was once a Palestinian fishing village called At Tantura. In 1948, it was destroyed by an Israeli paramilitary group and 200 of the village's boys and men were killed and buried in a mass grave. The grave was around four meters wide and 35 meters long, which is about the height of this building. Today, it's believed to sit beneath the beach's parking lot. But the massacre wasn't acknowledged by most Israelis until this year, when this article came out in Israeli newspaper Haaretz. The article discusses the findings of a new documentary called Tantura, which features the confessions of the Israeli paramilitary soldiers who took part in the massacre. These testimonies were first documented by an Israeli graduate student, Teddy Katz, in the 90s. When Israeli newspaper Marev published Katz's findings on the massacre, the soldiers recanted their testimonies and sued him for libel. According to Israeli historian Ilan Pape, Israeli mainstream media presented Katz as, quote, a fabricator, a pseudo-historian who had invented a non-event for ideological reasons. 20 years later, the publishing of the Haaretz article has renewed discussion of the massacre in Israel. One article in Haaretz writes that Katz, quote, revealed the massacre two decades ago. But revealed it to who? Palestinians have always known this massacre happened. Since the 1950s, testimonies, books, novels, and documentaries have documented the events at Tantura, and the site is visited each year by those coming to remember. The work of Palestinian historians, archivists, filmmakers, and community activists is rarely referenced in Israeli mainstream examinations of what happened in the run-up to the founding of Israel. This Haaretz article is no exception. Those mentioned in the piece are the Israeli soldiers, the Israeli graduate student Teddy Katz, Israeli historians like Ilan Pape and Benny Morris, and documents from the Israeli army archive. The publishing of the Haaretz article has reignited a conversation on who gets to write history and who's allowed credibility in the telling of it. What the Haaretz article is doing is trying to rely on Israeli institutional apparatus, on the Israeli historiography, academy, and the colonial archives, and the testimonies of the perpetrators to assess, you know, reassess what happened based on newly released and discovered evidence. And by doing so, it actually exceptionalizes what happened in Al Tantura, as, you know, and I quote here the author of the Haaretz article who explained it as bad behavior when it actually was happening systematically across uh, the land of historic Palestine uh, at the time. Let's go back to 1948, when Israel was founded. To Israelis, it's known as the War of Independence. To Palestinians, it's called the Nakba, or the Catastrophe. This was when Israeli paramilitary forces killed thousands of Palestinians and drove hundreds of thousands from their homes. All Israeli space is built on Palestinian space. At Tantura is not an exception, but is actually fits within a wider systematic erasure of Palestinian geographies and systematic targeting of Palestinian bodies. Tantura is just one of the over 400 Palestinian towns and villages that were destroyed or ethnically cleansed during the Nakba. Many of the towns, villages, and cities that survived were renamed and repurposed. Bir Saba became Bir Sheba. The city of Yaffa, once one of Palestine's main commercial hubs, is now part of Tel Aviv. Ein Hod village in the north is now Ein Hod, an artist colony. The mosque has been turned into a restaurant. A lot of Palestinian homes have been turned into galleries. Israel buried Palestinian history in other ways, too. After the Nakba, Muslim historical sites were destroyed. Forests were planted over the ruins of destroyed villages and evidence of the Nakba was systematically concealed in Israeli archives. And when Israel invaded Lebanon in 1982, the army looted the Palestine Liberation Organization's research center, stealing thousands of documents they had been collecting for 17 years, along with manuscripts, microfilms, and other parts of the PLO's vast cultural archive. <laughs> 
There is systematic denial uh, of al-Nakba in the official Israeli narrative. It's not only about the state and the state structures and the institutions denying that, but this is, you know, a ripple effect of a discursive effect, you know, that runs throughout Israeli society, through universities, through the army, through, you know, the creation of, of uh, public parks and leisure spaces on the ruins of Palestinian villages that create a condition whereby the settler lives without acknowledging or recognizing the continuous dispossession that's happening happening against against Palestinians. And that's why a lot of Palestinians say Al-Nakba Mustamirra, or the Nakba never ended. Because over 70 years later, Palestinians still feel they're being dispossessed of their land by the Israeli state. In occupied East Jerusalem, Palestinian families are being pushed out of their homes by Israeli court order in Sheikh Jarrah and other neighborhoods, while others are having their homes demolished. In the occupied West Bank, illegal settlements continue to be built and expanded on Palestinian land. According to the UN, 2020 marked a record year of settlement expansion in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem over the past five years, with over 20,000 settlements moving further along in the construction process. In the occupied Golan Heights, Israel plans to double its settlements. In the Gaza Strip, a siege restricts the movement of Palestinians who have been subjected to regular Israeli airstrikes. And in the Negev, where Palestinian Bedouin communities live, 35 villages unrecognized by the Israeli state are under routine threat of demolition. Al Araqib is one of these villages. It's been demolished 197 times. In order to settle the land, you need to dispossess the land of its residents. And this is the logic that informs Israeli settler colonialism, and that's why we call it settler colonialism in the first place. So if, if the Israeli society is not able to reckon with the present of how that manifests and continues uh, through its universities, through its um, education, through its public transportation system, through these different strategies, continues to implement uh, this logic of dispossession and continues to be complicit in it, then I can't see um, how these, you know, as they deem them, discoveries uh, that are based on the testimonies of perpetrators can actually uh, create, you know, a, a, um, a transformative change of how Israeli society thinks about um, about settlement, about occupation, about the massacres uh, that they commit against the Palestinians. Since the documentary's release, the Palestinian Authority and some Israeli leftists have called for the site of the mass grave to be excavated and for an investigation to be launched. Not many are hopeful. The Haaretz article itself says, quote, the grim events at Tantura will never be completely investigated. The truth will not be known. The Israeli army has declined to comment on the film and its findings. As for whether the Nakba is more likely to be acknowledged in the Israeli mainstream after all this, it doesn't seem likely. In the lead editorial Haaretz published to follow up the piece, it writes that, quote, the tragic hero of this story is Teddy Katz. Another article in the Jerusalem Post casts doubt on the findings of the film and calls the massacre a, quote, controversy. The piece also describes a scene in the documentary where the Israeli soldiers discuss whether a monument should be installed where the village Tantura once stood. Quote, most oppose the idea. Part of what this story does about Tantura actually, by claiming it or framing it as a discovery, is that it shows us actually a very important Israeli logic, which is the logic of discovery. You know, the fact that they now, even when they discover a massacre, they're able to contain it within their Israeli discourse and exceptionalize it as, as bad behavior. So even if more stories are, are going to come out, and you know, trust me, more stories are going to come out in, in the future, so many more stories. Uh, the Israeli uh, settler colonial uh, media or ac academia is, is going to try and exceptionalize them.